Hi everybody, Bill Owen from MMPCTech.com. How you doing? Here it is finally, the review of the Fantex Into Evolve. Their first micro ATX ITX chassis on the market. There's been a lot of excitement online about it. People like the look of it. It's different. It is. Uh, it's squatty lengthwise. But it looks cool. Stylish. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why people are really interested. When's the release date? How much is it? Well, what I know so far is that the retail price is going to be $139.99 here stateside. Um, that could change, though. You know, it happens. A release date, I don't really have that. Um, but usually, if you see a review from me, it's going to be a few weeks, and then you'll see it on the market. You can probably just go to Fantex's site and, you know, maybe even... Uh, they may have pre-orders set up already. They've done that with the Intu Pro and the Intu Primo. Anyways, uh, for a Micro ATX, the price point of 139 is a bit premium because most people, when they look at cases in that market, are thinking sub $100, less, you know, $80, maybe $70 for um, a well-constructed case. Now, I think that price point is justifiable because, of course, I'm looking at it in person and I can see that the exterior is all aluminum and it's eighth inch thick. Eighth inch thick. Tell me another case on the market that had eighth inch thick side panels on it. Aluminum. Post it in the comments. I want to know. Because I can't, I can't recall ever seeing one. There could have been one. Obscure. You can also put dual GPUs in this and you can have a dual loop system. You can put a 240 radiator in front, put one on the top, or a 280 on the top. They have individual loops, one for the CPU and one for the GPU or GPUs. You can put a pump in the bottom. But, all right, let's just do a tour of the exterior and then go on the inside and see what the Evolve is all about. All the exterior panels are aluminum, eighth inch thick. The window is cast polycarbonate, smoked, colored. It will fit two GPUs up to 318 millimeters, CPU cooler up to 192 millimeters, and a power supply up to 216 millimeters long, or longer if you remove the hard drive cages. Located on this side of the Evolve is two USB 3.0, a headphone and mic jack, and a reset and power button. Having the switches and I.O. ports located on the side is outside of the norm, but at least when you take the side panel off, you don't have to contend with wires and cables attached to the side panel. Everything is attached to the chassis. Accessing the front of the Evolve to clean out the filter and do any type of maintenance is super easy. The front bezel plate pops on and off in a flash and it's very durable. It's eighth inch thick aluminum. It's got heavy steel brackets that are powder coated. That channel right there is for the front power LED to illuminate through the front it's very subtle, and what's cool too is that Fantex included a red, green, and blue LED if you want to swap out the white that comes in it pre-installed. The design of the front filter really impressed me. It's very durable. It's all one piece that covers the entire front. There's a handle on it so you can pull it off easily. It's durable ABS plastic, fine mesh screen. This would be ideal for my workshop because of all the dust I create in here. Fantex has installed their F200 SP intake fan in the front so you're going to move a lot of air 110 cfm at 25 decibels which is really ideal for a high performance air cool setup or if you're already thinking about liquid cooling you can remove the 200 millimeter fan and put a 240 size radiator with two 120 millimeter fans and pop goes the top i think part of the fun is just taking everything apart so easily now look at the top panel that's eighth inch thick aluminum again and look at these airflow stream fins that they've created underneath. Also, there's mesh over the side vent holes that go on both sides of the panel. There's an 18 millimeter gap underneath the panel. You can buy 15 millimeter thick fans, but that's not really gonna give you much room for airflow. Cut some holes in the top of the panel. It would have been cool if that gap was even bigger so you could put 24 millimeter thick fans on top of the chassis with more space for the radiator on the ceiling, but there is 68 millimeters of space for a radiator to be mounted on the ceiling, which is really outstanding. Let's take a closer look at the cooling options in the top of the Intu Evolve. You can put two 120s in the top as exhaust, and the mounting 
holes are slotted so you can adjust the position to wherever you like. You can also fit a single or two 140 fans in the top as well. And notice that the slotted mounting holes are offset on the top. Over here is your motherboard area. And the reason they do this is so that you've got access to the DDR slots with certain types of motherboards. Here's a Hardware Labs X-Flow single 140 radiator. So that can mount there or all the way over here. I don't have a 280 radiator at the moment to show you, but I've got that GTX 240 again. Now you can put radiators with a maximum thickness of 68 millimeters in the top of the Infu Evolve. And that is an impressive amount of ceiling headroom space for a radiator in a micro ATX size case. Let's continue our walkthrough of the Intu Evolve and check out the back side of the case. It does fit a full size ATX power supply and you can put in whatever length power supply you want. All you have to do is remove the hard drive cages in the bottom of the case. It has four PCI slots so you can have a dual GPU system a 140 millimeter factory fan already installed and you have the option to put an optical drive or an optical bay unit or a reservoir in the back of the chassis if you like. The fan has slotted mounting holes so you can align it with a particular monster size heatsink if you like. There's plenty of ventilation holes on the back side of the chassis. Both side panels are hinged with pin style hinges so you can take them off easily. The power supply has a removable filter and some vibration dampening pads. Okay, just for fun, I'm going to show you how fast you can dismantle the Fantex Evolve. Three, two, one. And there you have it. <laughs> Ew, babe, um, touch me now. Think about it, some cases just the side access panel takes twice as long or longer than that. The chassis is constructed from steel and powder coated with a matte black finish. A nice little detail you don't see that often is that Fantex has applied adhesive backed black cushioning foam around the framework of the chassis and this gives you three benefits. It helps prevent the paint on the back side of the side panels from getting scratched or chipped it also isolates vibration from the chassis and helps dampen noise whenever the doors are closed. The Evolve has a midsection floor, which is something you normally see in full-size cases. This is nice because it isolates any heat generated by the power supply. There's also a section in here for optional two and a half or three and a half inch drives in one cage, and you can remove this cage and place a water pump in its place. The key design component that allows the Evolve to have a lot of internal space for a system or adding radiators is this mounting plate on the side of the chassis. It gives you the option to fit one three and a half inch drive on the side towards the motherboard or two SSDs or a cylinder style water cooling reservoir. However, at the time of this review, I tried to find out what model and brand reservoirs the mounting holes were made for and nothing is stated on Fantex website or in the user's manual. What I'm showing here is a Photon by XSPC 170mm reservoir. This didn't match up to the mounting holes, but there's plenty of space where you could bring out your drill and drill your own mounting holes. They give you 300mm height by 106mm width. So you've got that much space to make mounting holes for whatever reservoir will fit that amount of space. As I would expect from Fantex, the back side of the chassis is laid out really nice. There's Velcro straps for managing cables and wires. There's also large cable grommeted holes and all the PCBs are screwed on. So if you need to remove them for a custom paint job, that's easily done. 
There's two optional mounting locations for SSDs on the back side of the motherboard and there's a fan control hub that you have the option to use the PWM signal from your motherboard to use the motherboard software to control all of your case fans or you can bypass that and use the SATA power connection and have all the fans on full speed. Out of the box you get a 200 millimeter front intake fan and the Fantex Infu Evolve and a factory 140 millimeter fan already installed. Now your only other options for cooling in the front if for some reason you want to take out which is a great fan, moves a lot of air, low decibel rating, but if you want to have it your own way on things, you could put a couple of 120s in the front, or one 120 or two, and you can put a 240 radiator in the front. Now here's the thing, that radiator can't have an overall width no more than 125 millimeters because this notch that's cut out in the floor right here, it's not going to allow anything bigger. So for example, I've got this Hardware Labs 240 GTX radiator. These are awesome. It's not going to work because of the cutout in the floor won't allow it to go down all the way. Yeah, I could break out the rotary tool. Definitely mod it. But I've just given you an FYI on that. So those of you that want to put a radiator in the front are thinking a dual loop. Look at a radiator that's got a overall width of 125 millimeters or less right there. Although the front, being this just plate right here, it does have very good ventilation, so don't let the design fool you. There's plenty of air space around this front plate to bring plenty of air through the front. So I like that about it too versus having just a big huge grill on the front that would ruin the look aesthetic. The storage drive cage in the bottom of the Evolve will fit two 3.5 inch drives or two SSDs. The storage drive caddies are made from black ABS plastic and they're fairly durable and they have a unique hinge style latching system on the sides which has pins that protrude through the grommeted holes into the drive to fasten it in place. The design didn't feel flimsy at all like I've seen in some other manufacturer cases. I liked it and it worked very conveniently. Fantex only includes one SSD tray pre-installed on the back side of the motherboard plate. I do feel that if you're going to retail a case at this price point that you should include two trays with it versus just one. But if you do order the Evolve from Newegg.com stateside they do offer an additional tray for $9.99. Fantex does include a water pump mounting bracket in the accessory box. The bracket does have mounting holes that are compatible with Lang D5 water pump variants and AquaComputer AquaStream XT made by Eheim. The pump I'm installing is a SwiftTech MCP655 pump which falls under the D5 variant. Fantex has included this handy container of fasteners and you'll find the two fasteners you need to attach the water pump to the water pump base in the upper left corner of the fastener container. The screws I used are M4 thread and it was a nice gesture by Fantex to include them with the case. One thing that made me a little perplexed in regards to this water pump bracket is that it wouldn't fit a DDC pump or I should say there was no mounting holes that aligned with the DDC pump base and DDC pumps are very popular, especially stateside. Well, no, I will, I'll go as far as to say globally, it's pretty much Lang D5 and Lang DDC pumps, which again are rebranded by many different companies out there that are the most popular water pumps for liquid coolers. This prompted me to contact Fantex about it and they responded promptly and said that they were gonna add the mounting hose for DDC pumps in the next production run. It was great to get a response so promptly back from them and the fact that they do listen to feedback from users and welcome it. And so back to our D5 water pump installation. I've got it mounted on the bracket base and there's four slotted holes in the floor of the Evolve chassis so you can align it however needed for your particular loop. If you've seen the past Fantex case reviews we've done on this channel. We've always raved about the accessories that come with their cases. It's the best accessory box I've seen on the market. 
In particular, the Evolve has extra color LED lights that you can swap out the power to if you want. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen that before. Then there's extra cable management, Velcro straps, black cable ties, and then this is included with all the cases I've seen from Fantex is this organizer container for your different fasteners. All these fasteners are included. And for the Evolve, you have the option to put an optical drive into it if you want in the top rear of the chassis. So this is included in the accessory box. And also for all the Fantex cases I've seen, this water pump base. So you can put a water pump in the floor. And of course, the manual, and it's one of the best owner's manuals I've seen for a case to date. So to summarize the Fantex Intu Evolve Micro ATX ITX chassis, first things first, the design, it looks great. It's minimalistic yet stylish. It's going to look good years to come. It would look great in a full tower version. It would be cool in blue, red, silver. By the way, it is going to be offered in black as well. So far it's just white and black. The fit and finish, the materials used are all top notch, even the paint. I'm not surprised though because this is now the fourth case I've seen from Fantex and they've all been exceptionally well made. Accessibility, being able to take the exterior pieces off in just a matter of seconds, that sold me right away. <laughs> I really like that. Performance, whether you're going to air cool or liquid cool, I do think you're not really taking full advantage of the design if you're just going to air cool. It's really geared for somebody that wants to do either a single loop or two individual loops for liquid cooling. Yeah, I mean it's 18 inches tall for a micro ATX case. That's huge. That could be a record. In my opinion it's more intended for somebody who wants a liquid cool, but hey, I understand some people don't want to do that yet. Hey, maybe you can get the air cool system and grow into a liquid cool system. Get your all in one, and then the next year, think about DIY. Hmm. The price, $139.99. I don't see a problem with it because I think it's well made. I think you're getting your money's worth. I know that some people out there, especially when they're looking at the micro ATX market, they're like, well, you're, may, may, my price point's maybe $60 or $70. The case, the case wasn't made for that or made for you. It's made for somebody who really wants to take advantage of its features when it comes to liquid cooling, all the space inside of it. You know, somebody that really wants to squeeze a lot of performance out of a micro ATX or ITX motherboard. I do like the fact that Fantex still took into consideration people that want to use a five and a quarter bay, whether it be a drive or some type of uh, I.O. accessory like for, you know, reading memory cards or just another set of I.O.s or whatever. Yes, it is at the back of the chassis, but they gave you the option if you wanted it. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Also, what's great about it is the fact that you could put a five and a quarter bay reservoir back there. And I know a lot of people prefer that type of reservoir over the cylinder style reservoir. So it's nice to have options. So there you have it, my review of the Fantex Infu Evolve. I want to thank Fantex for sending me the sample. It was fun to look at it. And I hope that they send me a sample of the next case they do. It looks like it's the Infu Primo Mini. Is that it? I think that's what it is. That will be the next one. And I want to say hello to all the new subscribers. I know that I've got some subscribers that saw our French Lake Junkyard visit. And just a warning that we also have some geeky content, uh, computer related customizing stuff, but we also like cars. And I may try to eke in some car stuff because I do love cars. And the guys from the Mazu are into cars, except for Nubasaurus. He doesn't like them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching my review, and we're going to have some more videos out soon. And uh, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss them, and thank you for watching.